Hi, hey, thank you for coming out to the channel and to you, the subscriber. Thank you for your support. And if you're not a subscriber, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell because it costs you nothing and it helps out the channel. You know, I try to be a better person today versus yesterday, yet I'm still human and it's complicated being human. The most complex part of being human is the colored glasses I use to see the world every day. Yet, every once in a while, if I'm quiet and not paying attention, my glasses will slip from my face and for a moment, I get to see a little more of what's really happening. I was thinking about judgment the other day, and it happened when I was thinking about this continuum of health and wellness. And, you know, one day you're feeling great, you're feeling active and alive, and another day you caught a cold or you have a hangover and you're feeling pretty much like crap. And another day you didn't get enough sleep and you're really tired. Oh, so health and wellness have different degrees of feeling healthy and well every day and even every hour. And it's not constant. It's constantly changing. Another way of thinking about health and wellness is the changing light of day. So at dawn, there's a brightness that creeps over the horizon and day becomes brighter and brighter as the sun moves towards noon. And then after the sun reaches its height, daylight begins to decline as the sun slowly slides to the west and then it finally sinks under the horizon. And the thing about this that really captured my attention was that Everything in life is this constant continuum. It's constantly moving and changing. So life is constant change. You know, I was thinking about this constant continuum when something happened in the world outside my head. You know, someone out there was doing something, you know, maybe loudly proclaiming their opinion, maybe starting a fight. Whatever was happening annoyed me. And I judged the person and not too kindly. And I just wanted to pick up my groceries and get out of the store and away from their onslaught of negativity. And as I was walking out the store, I was grateful to be out of the hate and discontent. And the space gave me some room to breathe and think about what was happening. Okay, this is going to go someplace where you didn't think it was going to go, but let me tell you, later, a similar incident happened where someone was reacting from their space and puking all over everyone else. And I judged that person as annoying and selfish. And as I watched the situation play out, I stopped and I spent a minute in their shoes, you know, empathy. But that's not the thing that caught my attention, not empathy. As I was watching this person puke their emotions all over everyone, and I was starting to empathize with their feeling of powerlessness and their feeling of being a victim, I suddenly realized we all do this. Now, okay, so we don't all play powerless and victim, but you and I and everyone else does this. We react from our point of view, and every action is only you and I reacting from our experiences in how we learn to survive. So poor behavior, it's just our desire to survive based on what we learned as a child. And being the behavior is actually really egocentric. It's actually selfish. So for me and this other person, both our reactions were based on judgments. Their judgment of the situation of feeling powerless and a, a victim had them puking their emotions on everyone. <laughs> and my judgment of the situation had me labeling them as selfish and annoying. I grew up at a time when records were how the world listened to music and vinyl records. These were vinyl platters with these little circular grooves on them were what records look like. And you had to be careful not to scratch the record because if you did, 
your record would be scratched and the needle that played the record would skip at the scratch and you could never go past that scratch so judgment to me seems a little bit like that scratch in a vinyl record so when you buy a new vinyl record it's perfect and your vinyl record plays through every song without a hitch and then life happens and the vinyl record gets scratched one day and every time you come to that scratch on the record it skips or gets stuck there and it can't move on so thoughts create the world and make it unique and individual to you but that brings me back to judgment because judgments are thoughts and they're black and white thoughts of right and wrong and judgments come in all sorts of shapes and colors from calling someone a Karen to bullying to using labels to belittle and restrain someone to believing someone deserves something or to acceptance and to believing you're right that when it dawned on me judgments are about a point in time so think about the day you know at noon you might say oh it's so bright and hot out and you wouldn't say that at midnight because it's dark out at midnight and you wouldn't say that in a snow blizzard because then it'd be cold so if you were standing on the earth judgment is about this point in space and time and the minute time moves on the judgment is no longer valid but here's the thing about judgment you don't move on from them you make a ruling based on your interpretation of the situation and you don't put it down so later that evening you're still remembering the judgment in the situation and nothing has changed in your head even though everything else in the world has changed three things captured my attention about judgment First, judgments are a point in space and time. Second, they're based on your experiences and analysis of the situation, which of course is not accurate. It's your scratch on the record. And third, judgments don't change. So hours and days later, you'll still have that same conclusion on the situation, just like that scratch on the record. So there's this story of two monks and a woman. So let me tell you it. A senior monk and a junior monk were traveling together. At one point, they came to a river with a strong current. And as the monks were preparing to cross the river, they saw a very young and beautiful woman also attempting to cross the river. The young woman asked if they could help her cross to the other side. Please, Mr. Monk, can you help me get across the river? The two monks glanced at one another because they had taken vows not to touch a woman. Then, without a word, the older monk picked up the woman and carried her across the river placed her gently on the other side, and carried on his journey. The younger monk couldn't believe what had just happened. After rejoining his companion, he was speechless, and an hour passed without a word between them. Two more hours passed, then three, and finally, the young monk could contain himself no longer and blurted out, as monks, we are not permitted to touch a woman. How could you carry that woman across to the other side? The older monk looked at him and replied, Brother, I set her down on the other side of the river. Why are you still carrying her? So this Zen story is a beautiful message about living in the present moment. And you carry around your past hurts, you hold on to resentments, and the only person that's hurting is you. Everyone goes through times in life when other people are going to say or do things that hurt you, and you can stew over the past, and it's going to weigh you down and darken your life, 
or you can let it go and focus on the present moment. Until we can find a level of peace and happiness in the present circumstances of our lives, we will never be content. Now is all we will ever have. So you and I are just trying to survive and our responses are going to be from our heart and from our beliefs and from our experiences and from lack of knowledge. So check out my episode on presence, how to find presence in challenging times. And it goes into more detail on this, but there's one other part of judgment. There's another part of that skip on the vinyl record. And the other part of that broken place on the record is experience. I can only see the world from my eyes and the limitations that I impose on my sight. And I think that is where things can be a bit confusing because judgment, it can also keep you safe, right? So not walking into a dark alley in a big city is about judgment based on your learnings, that the alley might not be a safe place. So this episode is not about judgments that keep you safe. So there's another story of the six blind men and an elephant. And that story is the six blind men. They've never experienced an elephant. And they have to imagine what the elephant is like by touching it. So each blind man feels a different part of the elephant's body and describes the elephant based on their limited experience. So their descriptions of the elephant, they're all different from each other's because, you know, one feels the trunk, one feels the tail, one feels the side of the body, one feels the foot. So they're all experiencing a different part of the elephant. And the moral of this story is that humans tend to claim absolute truth based on their limited subjective experience and they ignore other people's limited subjective experiences even though they may be equally true so judgment can be this broken place in my programming that doesn't let me see all the other parts of reality it's this point in time and space and as the clock continues to move forward I don't change my judgment of the situation. I'm not seeing the different dimensions of that point in time and space. I'm only seeing my very narrow perception of the story based on my experiences. So if I'm one of the blind men and I get to fill the tusk, you know, it's my very limited experience of an elephant based on the tusk. It's like I have blinders on and that is the definition of selfish, right? Focusing on yourself. And yet I can't change without doing a lot of self-analysis because just like a fish in water, I can't imagine a world without water. And every action I do is just varying levels of a fish in water. I guess what really struck me is that every one of my judgments is an opportunity for me to challenge myself. So judgments are an opportunity to be the fish who does see a world without water. They're an opportunity to find empathy for the other person so that I can start to understand why it was so crucial for me to judge. And in this situation, empathy is not the end. It's a means to an end. And the more I understand myself and my programming, the more I can find my own inner peace with my interactions with the world. Okay, so there's some thoughts on judgment. And until next time, I'll catch you on the other side.